Hey, little editor's note here. In the video that you're about to see, you might start to notice a trend. I do kind of start to point out this trend as I notice it as well. Um, when you start to pick up on what this trend is, if you start to get bored during this video, I can't express enough that you should watch until the end. It is rare that I say that in these videos as I don't try and farm watch time and all of that. It, this time it's a bit special. Now, if you really just don't care about the main meat and you just want to see the most interesting part, here's a timestamp for where you need to start watching at the end. There's not a whole lot to it. Uh, but yeah, I suggest watching it all the way through. So normally, whenever a new set releases, I do the Pokemon Center version of the ETB. I was uh, too late to pre-order this one. So, um, I'm just going to be throwing two extra packs in this video because the Pokemon Center version comes with 11. And so, yes, that isn't the only difference between the Pokemon Center version and the regular. But, I mean, it kind of makes up for it, right? So we just got to splice this thing open. Hopefully everything looks okay on the camera. I'm still testing out some new settings. I've been using this newer camera as of late. And there were some things that I didn't like, and I did a bit of testing before this. But not a terrible look. ETB, very reminiscent of Evolving Skies, the, their ETB. Oh, does it come with that card, which I assume means that you get a stamped one with the Pokemon Center version, which blows that I didn't get it. So, of course, inside you have the player's guide with all the cards from the set. If you are new to this channel, when a new set releases, I go in blind, so I'm not going to have a great idea as to the polls that we can get. I think it's more fun that way. That something is stuck. Yeah, there, there, there are sleeves stuck in there. But we have our sleeves right here, the sleeves that I never use. Uh, here's the code card for the whole box, if you guys would like it. Uh, we have a pack of energy. Then we have our dividers. As I've mentioned, I actually make use of these, so always good to have more. Then we have our dice, and if I can kind of find it... Yep, there's our symbol. It's just an EX symbol, which is kind of lame. Not the actual set symbol, but I guess the set symbols are kind of gone now, right? With Scarlet and Violet, they're like not doing that anymore. Uh, condition markers. And of course, we have the nine Paldea Evolved Packs. And I gotta say, I like some of the artwork that they chose, especially including my little ferret boy there. Our new uh, legendary, along with our starters, obviously. They had to keep doing the starters now in their final form for this set. But yes, it did also come with our promo Pikachu here. And if I recall, this promo was in something very different in Japan. I feel like it came with, like, a version of a game or something. I don't know. But, like, this promo came with something, I think, it was a bit harder to get in Japan, if I remember correctly. Um, here, it just comes in the ETB, so it's probably not going to have a whole lot of value behind it, even though it is a beautiful promo. Like I said, I assume that there's a Pokemon Center stamped version, and I would love to pick it up. But if it's anything like the Cordon and Maridon uh, promo stamped cards, I probably won't want to spend that much money. But not bad looking. All right, let's just start digging into these packs. So this will be my first ever Paldea Evolved pack. Uh, so it should just be the same as Scarlet and Violet. We just take one out the back, which is the code card, and then call it good. Technically, we could pull the energy out, but I always risk accidentally pulling the uh, the good thing at the back. And I've done that multiple times, and it's not worthwhile. We have the Pupitar. I'm liking some of the artwork in this. We have the Dun Dun Sparse, the Corviknight. We have a Reverse Citadel, uh, Reverse Gyarados. Very nice looking. Is that a... Okay, no, I guess it's just like an attack he's using. It almost looked like a Rotom there. It's kind of hard, harder for me to see this than it is for you guys. And on the back, we have a Hollow Boss's Orders. So we have our... 900th artwork for a boss's orders card and then yes we have the energy so pack trick is the same or rather the lack thereof it also looks like we are probably going to be continuing with the guaranteed hollow and two reverses well not entirely on the two reverses but the guaranteed hollow does definitely bring the value of whoops i did that wrong um it does definitely bring the value of our hollows down so we have our shirtle i still love that little guy we have the Glimit uh, Bramblin. We have the Shinx. Um, I'm really liking the artwork in this set. Some of these are really not bad. Uh, we have the Reversal Energy. It would be nice if you were as a reverse. Uh, can't say I recognize that card. I, I assume it's new to this set. Uh, yeah. 
We have a hop hip and an Obama snow. All right, poles are not super great so far. Um, luckily, when it comes to the uh, the next set, Obsidian Fields, I believe it is called. Um, I already have my pre-order in. God, these cards are not coming out. I already have my pre-order in for that set um, for the Pokemon Center ETB, uh, which is good because oh wait, whoa 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 I'm starting to do the pack trick. Whoops, um, that's what I get for just like having a calm discussion while I'm opening with you know new sets. Um, apparently that set has just been selling like crazy. It has been like hyped like crazy and it's making it a lot harder for people to get their hands on. So I'm happy I already got that pre-order in, uh, and a standard hollow again. So no pull so far. Are we looking at another battle styles where you just like can't pull anything or am I just getting all of the bad packs out of the way first? Let's slide this out, take out our little ferret thing there. I assume he's supposed to be a ferret. It looks very ferret like. There's the code card, and we have the Nimble Mastiff Slackoth, the Paldean Whooper Therapeutic Energy. That's interesting. We have the Choice Belt Pomo, the Shrudel Giraffe Rig, and come on, give me something. An Oricoro Hollow. Man, just nothing. We have five packs left, so we still have a majority left before I do the extra two that I'm throwing into this video. Like, I'm enjoying the new artworks and stuff. I mean, it's a very nice looking set. It would be nice if we could pull, you know, something good. Why is it impossible for me to get cards out of packs today? I'm just gonna have to just like destroy this one if I have any hope. I don't even know if I'm opening it right now. Yeah, I am. I'm just, holy God. That pack was holding on. Maybe I should have just left that one sealed. Uh, we have the Torrentula, the uh, Char Chardet? I don't know how to pronounce your name. We have the Murkrow, Mistrevious, Luxio. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We have the Luminous Energy. We have the Bombardier, uh, little little goth lady. Uh, Grafii, also another favorite of mine from Scarlet and Violet. And we have a Jumpluff Hollow. Wow, that's like a strong hollow because there's like nothing going on behind it. I swear, if I don't get a single pull from my first, uh, oh, 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 sort of do that backwards. For my first opening of this set, I'm going to be a little, little upset. Like we're doing 11 packs in total here, and so far just nothing. Pikachu, the Q Fant, the Crow Gunk looks a little goofy there. Uh, we have the Rookady, the Tinka Tough, Bravery Charm, Hunch Crow. We have the, I, I don't know how to say your name, man. Uh, we have the Sprigatito as a reverse. Not a bad, it's never bad to get starters as a reverse. And on the end, a Glimora. Man, I'm starting to think that this ETB was just not worth my time. Maybe if I didn't, maybe in the future, if I can't get the Pokemon Center version, whoops. I just won't get a uh, an ETB. Just <laughs> never get an ETB for that set. Even though ETBs are like kind of my favorite product to buy and it's like my favorite way to get introduced to a new set. Because you get other things that are like themed around the set. Um, of course, you have the box itself, the player's guide. It's kind of cool. It's a nice introduction to a set, in my opinion. Uh, Gimlet, and finally! So that's, okay, I kept forgetting your name. It's like Chin Pal? Or like Chin Pal? I don't know how to say it. But we got him as an EX. I mean, as a standard EX, he's probably not worth much. But we finally got a pull. And that is like, at this point, all I care about. I will take anything above a standard hollow. <laughs> but getting our legendary as an EX is always nice and on the end. All right, next pack. Um, yeah, normally I would be like, hey, you know, we just pulled the ferret card. I should go grab one of my two ferrets. But they're like asleep in their cage and I have to go to work soon. So I'd rather not get them riled up just for me to have to immediately put them back up because I'm going to work. We have the Magnemite, the Phalanx, and the Combi. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we keep them in their cage when we're at work. Um, sometimes when we're sleeping, it kind of just depends. But don't, don't think it's one of those situations where they're like, locked away all the time. They spend a lot of their time out of the cage. And it's a very massive cage. We have the Palmont and an energy. This is our last pack from the ETB. And then of course we have our uh, two additional packs here. Uh, something. We, 
if I walk out of this with a single EX, man, like, not even, like, any, like, illustration rares, like, in the reverse slots, like, come on. We have the Pineco uh, Tinka Tank, I believe. We have the Minky Deli Bird. I really like that. Very, uh, 2D. Uh, don't know how to say your name. We have the Polisand, the Raichu, Slowpoke, the Practice Studio, and a Hariyama. So no... This, just... Just one pull from nine packs. I mean, they just increased the price of ETBs too. Like, that kind of blows. All right, let's start off with the ferret pack. Hope that we can get something from one of these two at least. Maybe buying loose packs is the way to go with all they evolve. Maybe you should just be buying loose and not from, uh, from ETBs. Um, well, I will say that pack opened a lot easier, although I keep doing it backwards with the code card facing the wrong way. To be honest, I don't even know if the code card, like, backs mean anything anymore. I'm so out of the loop on it, and I'm kind of happy about it, because if it still does mean something, and it could spoil if you get a pull or not, not knowing is kind of bliss, right? Because you, you don't know when you see the backs, so what does it matter to you? We have the Noibat, whoop, 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 uh, Superior Energy Retrieval, and a Glimora. Alright, this is the one. This is gonna be the pack that gives us something. We have, uh... Uh, God, why'd I forget? Uh, Skeleturge there, and Ferret on the inside. Yeah, it's so weird that they don't, like, match those up. Like, I get it. It would take more effort, but, like, I don't know. It's kind of weird. So, let's... Am I doing it backwards again? Yes, I am. It needs to be facing the camera. Anyways, yeah, I'm, I'm like, getting a thing down to remember which way it should face on the last pack in the video. We have the Mankey Deli Bird, the Super Rod... That feels like I grabbed more than one card. Huh. We have the Love Disc, the Dun Dun Sparse, uh, Passamin Corviknight. We have the Vespa Queen, the Weed Cat, and the Glamora again. What is it, like three or four Glim... Whoa. Well, the lighting just changed because I accidentally changed the temperature of the light behind it and made it flash, so that's real cool. Wow, 11 packs, one pull. Let's move on to the bonus card of the day. At least we're guaranteed to at the very least get something decent in here. These are cards that I buy as singles specifically to go in this segment. They always get shuffled up around every time I add new cards to it. Actually, let's remember, I have more cards I need to add to it that are just kind of sitting in a pile. Um, anyways, by the time they're shown on here, I usually forget what's even inside. This card is not sleeved. I always leave them in the condition they were whenever I bought them. Not being sleeved is a kind of bad sign for hoping for something good. The lack of whitening also means that it's going to be more modern, so we're probably, if I had to guess, looking at a more modern either stamped card or like a trainer gallery. We have... no, actually. Um... We have a hollow... No, that's boring. I feel like this is one that I threw in a long time ago. Because uh, I used to like, you know, I open products to do on YouTube shorts. And I'm like, oh, I can throw the promos in that thing. That's boring and that's cheap. We got a Lucario. That's cool. There's price. We're doing another. Yeah, I, I stopped doing that. I didn't realize any more of those are still in there. Maybe this is also one of them. Uh, I, I went ahead and got a sneak peek. It is not one of them. Um... <laughs> Again, not sleeved, no whitening, so pretty similar situation, but it is the Radiant Gardevoir. Now, these Radiants don't tend to have a whole lot of value, although there have been some exceptions. But really happy to have found this card. I believe it was at the card store that I normally go to. Um, because in Scarlet and Violet, uh, the shiny Ralts ended up being my first shiny that is kind of randomly found in the wild. And so getting the Radiant Gardevoir card just felt kind of fitting. You know, the, this shiny is a little bit more special to me thanks to that being my first shiny in Scarlet and Violet. So cool. Not a bad looking card to end this out on. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like. Uh, let me grab the, the thing. Press this button down below. I really do hope that you guys have enjoyed. And hopefully I will see all of you guys next time. Goodbye for now. All right, so in the beginning, I told you to stay until the end. I apologize for the bad lighting, all of that. I'm filming this last minute. So after filming that opening, my girlfriend wanted to open some packs. And so she had actually picked up five packs, so I picked them up for her. 
Um, these are all like the commons and all of that. Out of five packs, these are the pulls. Now granted, in the video that you just watched, we had one good pull. One out of 11 packs. So these are all the commons and hollow, well, uh, sorry, reverses and hollows. Uh, but then you get down to, well, look at that. We have an illustration rare, the Quaxwell. Um, what's actually funny is after filming this video, um, I had gone and actually took a little dive through this, and there was one card in here that I really wanted all three cards in the line of. And this is akin to that. It's the starter line for Skeledurge that I'm looking for, but we got one from the other starter line. Uh, then we have the Squawkabelly EX, so already we have double the amount of pulls than we had in the main video. Also, I apologize for audio as well, I'm not using my microphone. Uh, we have the Boss's Orders Full Art. I looked into this. It was kind of higher price. You guys will see it down below. And we got one of the three that I was just talking about from the Skeleturge line. We have the Foy Coco. I love these because not only is it my favorite starter from this game, but it's, in all three of them, it's like them shopping in a grocery store and a little Foy Coco just being there in the shopping cart. So out of five packs, my girlfriend gets four pulls. These were all in different packs, with only one pack being a dud. I do 11 packs, and we only get one pull. I think this is the first time I've ever turned the camera around while it's still at my recording setup, although I had to move this thing out of the way. Uh, yeah, I also want to apologize for this video being so late. Life got terrible, and I wasn't able to to do things uh, with with good timing and uh, being able to work on YouTube stuff was just killing me mentally on top of everything else. So it was kind of a bit of a break that I didn't want to do, uh, but it sort of happened. So I was late to the set, but I'm still happy that I was able to do it. Wow, this lighting really sucks. Okay, goodbye.